Entertainment in the media industry has changed so much. The role of women has changed so much. The fact that there are leaders like you, uh, obviously making a, playing a major role in transforming everything, is something that's clear. Uh, it's also would be wrong to believe that because we have a few leaders, everything has changed for everyone, and it's a dramatically different place for all women. So before we go any further, let me just try and get from you the state of the industry, how much has changed, how much still needs to change. Would you like to go first, Aparna, and then we'll go this way? Um, so it's, it's definitely the, the whole industry has gone through a paradigm shift. I distinctly remember when I had started out about 22, 23 years ago, uh, you know, I'd probably be the only woman on sets at that time. Um, you know, often ignored, uh, wouldn't be taken for outdoor skeds because, you know, uh, I'd become a nuisance. I wouldn't be able to share a room with anyone. How would they organize a toilet? And therefore, I wouldn't get the credit on screen. It was, uh, those were tough days. From then to now, there's been a paradigm shift. Just the number of women who are now in front of and behind the camera, it's incredible. And I also want to acknowledge the role of streaming in it. It's really democratized the industry, the kind of avenues, the opportunities that have opened up. It's just absolutely beautiful. However, I also wanted to point out that uh, you know, last year, in 2023, the World Economic Forum had put out a global gender gap report. And as per that, if women were to achieve parity in this world, it would take at least 131 years. Um, but I feel in India, we've made some long strides, uh, you know, whether it is uh, getting 44%, whether it is women getting 44% medals in the Asian Games or 100 women behind the Chandrayaan 3. Uh, we've made some great strides, but a lot needs to be done. Um, you know, at Prime Video, we partner on a report that Ormax Media and Film Companion put out on gender representation. Uh, and as per that, out of uh, 131 CXO positions that exist in media and entertainment, only 13% are occupied by women. Uh, out of the uh, over 150 uh, shows and films that they studied, uh, and 750 HOD positions, only 12% occupied by women. So we still have a long, long way to go. Uh, and I just wanted to put out a small insight that when women are at the helm of affairs, when women are commissioning content, there are more women who find jobs both in front of and behind the camera. The gaze is different, the lens is different. So we still have a lot of work to do. We've made some great strides. Great. Um, Ekta, would you, would you also feel that Oh, the changes are, of course, accelerating, and OTT may have, had a, may have a factor in it. But did the change start earlier? When did it start from film? Did it start from television? Did it start in other areas also? And if so, what to your mind was the inflection point where people said, you know, actually, there's no difference. Uh, in, in, and nobody's going to be thinking twice about the fact that is it a female director or a male director? Because that's what actually you should aspire to that it's not even a talking point, who's the director? So before we get into being gender agnostic, what's really important is to know that the commerce of films or television starts from the basic genesis whose story it is. So when you tell more stories about women, there are more uh, writers and directors. While I'd love to be politically correct and say, every story is gender agnostic, that you need sometimes a female lens to a story. And uh, television, I thought, created that base for a lot of women to find a safe space to work because a lot of their stories were told. And uh, movies used to have the hero, the villain, and the heroine would mostly be there for songs. Television had the heroine and the vamp, and the heroes would be there for the sweet scenes in the middle, you know? Sometimes even dead scenes. <laughs> so, so that really helped. But you know, I'd like to point out something that I feel more and more is happening. 
uh, while there are more women behind the scenes and all of us have taken uh, stronger positions to see that there is lesser gender bias when it comes to having women getting equal opportunity. In movies, more and more, it's becoming difficult to make films about women. I'm just making a film called The Crew and there was so much love for the promo. And I can't even tell you the amount of people who've told me that who will watch a film about three women? Ab isme teen hero hote the story would be totally different. This mindset can only change by changing the commerce of it. And that me and Rhea, as two female producers, are extremely um, dedicated to. Because when the commerce changes, the kind of films change, the lens changes, more women work. So I think it's given and, give and take. And um, while I feel TV has changed and streaming because the likes of Parna and Monica has changed a lot, film still is a tough challenge. I'm actually interested to hear what you just said and somewhat alarmed because there was a perception a few years ago that female-oriented movies and serials are actually becoming easier to produce, easier to market, easier to sell. You're saying that's not the case. Yeah, not the case. It's changed again after COVID. It becomes far tougher because it's easier to make a slightly more mi misogynistic, if not at least a very m m uh, ma uh, full of machism kind of film than making a film celebrating womanhood or feminism. I mean, the word feminism is almost a taboo now in movies, but it's so scary because we as women producers want to support even a storyline which gives you a certain amount of change. But then, like I said, we'll be at it and let's see what happens. Richard, that, that from that view from behind the screen, what's it like in front of the screen? Because there was a perception that, you know, Female, act, uh, 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 female, female actors are getting a chance to do a wide range of different sort of movies. Options were coming their way which would not ha happen earlier. How has it been for you? I'm, I'm actually really uh, uh, lucky because I've got to play very different parts uh, in my life and very sort of risky and controversial and sort of uh, interesting parts, but none of them have been regular. So. I can't really speak to that, but I think that th yeah, things are changing, things are moving slowly. Uh, but I have to agree with Ekta here, till there is a response from the audience, which is you guys, very little can change because everything becomes a showbiz part, the business part of the, uh, the filmmaking sort of overwhelms everything else eventually. You have to make things that are, uh, I'm not saying you have to necessarily compromise on quality, but you have to make things that are accessible, that people want to pay money to watch, and that will drive the change. The storytelling, yes, of course. The stories will, the, the people will only come if the stories are nice. I mean, in most cases. Kabi-kabi ulta bhi hota hai. But I mean, we've seen, we've seen movies and others made about matches more, about some of the other themes, and they've done really well. Um, how long, how far away are we from the position that women are going to be able to, obviously you're, you'll be creating the movies, acting in, in, in them. What, what will it take to get more and more of those women dominated themes to really become the norm? And you don't have to think twice about it. And it's not less marketable. How far are we from that? Someone censoring me. <laughs> no. I'm just saying, I think I, uh, I forgot the question. No, I'm saying that how long do you think it will be where the person making, is it the situation right now that if it's a female director, a female producer, females who are working behind the scene, or a female-oriented movie, it still, does that still matter or is that not a factor today? I mean, it is a factor because when you try and go and sell this film that suppose you've produced a film with a female director and a female producer, uh, if you go and try and sell the film, they'll ask ki hero kaun hai. Very, by and large, it's still a boys club. Let's not pretend otherwise. But I think the change will come uh, 
when the stories get better and more interesting and when people are engaged with those stories, whether they're rip tickling family comedies or something about empowerment, I mean, uh, it's not, this is a, I, I think, uh, I mean, basically I want to stop coming on these panels where we discuss female, <laughs> female feminist things because there's no panel which is for men, right? Yeah. How can we improve the position of men in the industry? Most I feel like I want to stop coming. And you're right, and you're right. That's when, that is when you know you're getting somewhere, when you're not having to discuss it or debate it because it's taken for granted. Exactly. Right? That's what you do. And we were just discussing this uh, a little earlier, Ratna, because look, for me, to be completely honest, it's somewhat baffling to be having discussions about female boss and is there a glass ceiling and what is the ratio. For me, the reason it is baffling is that in my entire working career, I've always had a female boss, always, from day one. And I've always worked in an organization which is female majority. So I don't know any other way to be. Are you telling me it's not the norm? I kind of agree with Aparna there, okay? So uh, I think there are lots, don't get me wrong, even when I started out almost 25 years ago, there were lots of women who were working in the industry. There were lots of them in the creative field, but there were still lots of areas where women were not there, okay? So for instance, in pure production, you wouldn't hear of too many female heads of production. They were not there. In finance, there weren't that many women. You know, it's a little different there. and eventually for it to cease to be a point of discussion, it needs to be a fabric of that creation. It just needs to exist, right, across departments. Uh, then, Vikram, you've been fortunate that you've had female bosses, and I know because we worked in a common organization, NDTV, but um, it brings, it's, it's a lot, the dialogue is very different, the conversation is very different, the ideas you'll pick up is very different if there's a female voice. The way you'll put the team together, the writing team, so many things, the way you'll cast, the way you'll market, everything changes when there is equal representation. It's a very different ball game. Yeah. May I just add something to it? Yeah. I also feel that you know some of this change, uh, you have to be intentional about it, you have to be mindful about it, and you have to be relentless about it. To give you, a, a, you know, an instance, we have made it a mandate uh, that every writer's room of ours has to have a woman. We are now working towards getting at least 30% women, uh, you know, across all HODs in all of our shows. It's a tall order, but it's an intentional action that we are working towards. I also just wanted to point out that there weren't so many women and there aren't so many women because, you know, historically we've not had those opportunities. There were no too many assistant directors, there were no too many assistant cinematographers, assistant editors, we never got the opportunities. So now to suddenly imagine that there will be a lot of women directors and writers, it's, you know, it's not possible because we've not had that opportunity, we've not had that training ground. So it's important for women who are now at the helm of affairs to make this intentional change. For us to have that kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, business that we are talking about. To give you an example, for uh, you know, and I can only talk about Amazon, but uh, four more shots, please. You know, a show of ours, three seasons, because it was loved and absolutely viable for us, made in heaven. You know, helmed by women for the first time, a character from the LGBTQIA plus community. You know, not you know, as a friend or a sidekick, but headlining the show, you know, and accepted, and the show went into a subsequent season. Uh, you know, this year we put out shows like Dahar, like Jubilee, strong women. You have to make that intentional, mindful change for things to change. And I couldn't agree more, Vikram. You know, uh, it's 20 years to Indian Idol that we've been producing in this country. I did the first season, and I remember that when we went casting, right, these are real people we're talking about. They're bringing their real life stories to us, and we're portraying that. There were barely any women. This weekend, we had our finale, and when the top six lined up, there were three boys and three girls. It was a really proud moment for us. 
in season one, and I without have told any parents. and without any effort for gender balancing, so it happened organically. No, but I agree with uh, Aparna. Initially, we had to make it intentional. Girls would come to auditions, not tell their folks, and I'd have the job of calling parents and saying, "Please, वो बहुत अच्छा गाती है, उसको आने दो ना, chance दो ना, तुम्हारा life बन जाएगा, family का life बन जाएगा, right?" To today, when parents come into the room with them and say, "I want my daughter to pursue her dream," because we've had success stories with women, 20 years of effort, women, 20 years of intentional effort, and slowly the fabric is changing. So we've got miles to go before we sleep, but there is a silver lining. So does it require risk taking in some way that you know it, a there's a formula, there's a formula like which I says. Like I said on TV and streaming, it's far easier. and i said it before this and i'll continue saying it because there is an equal and easy opportunity but where the money lies with the man and it's still very tough and like i said i might be going against the tide and saying this but a lot of women wait for their husbands to buy their tickets in the theater the choice of movies that's where i was actually going at because you know what happens is see tv streaming these are platforms and they're great but when you talk about a really like a high end high big budget 100 crore film and you say okay dipika is there or alia is there definitely the film because they're led by these women but when you talk start talking about slightly radical topics about women on film and extremely conservative mediums like television there's still resistance i'd like to point out something I personally, I, I'm a firm believer that in the last 30 years, from the time I came and people were calling me lady producer, there is a huge change. I had to, I mean, no one really knew what a produce, how can a producer be a woman? And me and my mom started the company. People said, why don't you use your dad's name? He is the big name. You both are the flunkies on the side. And uh, from there, it's changed a lot. But just recently, this happened. I went for a meeting. and i went with a friend of mine who's a um, another producer he's a boy and there were a lot of it was a lot of executives and there were lots of men in the room and in 5 minutes they had made a circle of people standing and for almost 5 minutes i was standing alone and i was in shock because i was like okay this is funny why is this happening and then a, a few minutes later a few women were there and i was supposed to go and stand with them and i was in a bit of a shock and this was like this high end top brass executive meeting and i turned around and i told my friend i said does this happen often and he said i don't know i really made it a point after that to ask a lot of women working in a few organizations around there and they said we are in a room and normally someone will turn around and say okay when these girls leave we'll crack that joke and i felt so like upset not because of anything else but because if it can happen to me at where i stand which i feel is a bit i've so called reached somewhere how tough it must be for women to feel um included and therefore i feel we still are a long way because the mindset in so many organizations still hasn't changed yeah. richa you must be facing the pressure in multiple directions you're also known as being really outspoken you don't hesitate to speak your mind you're on social media taking it on fighting trolls you don't seem to care what what anybody is saying Do you have people looking at you and saying, "Boy, ये सब क्यों बोलती हो? थोड़ा low profile हो जाओ. Why are you so controversial? ज़्यादा बोलती हो. क्यों कहने की ज़रूरत है?" अब तो बहुत कम बोलती हूँ मैं. As compared to what I was uh, like, I think. Not that sure. I've been seeing recently. <laughs> I I honestly well. People say that yeah, but don't be outspoken. But then there, there's the reverse also. They're like, "Wow, you're so." courageous for instance and that can make your day and it'd be nice to hear uh i uh i mean i like i really don't think that that we should bother honestly because social media is meant to democratize voice like everyone can have a voice and you can also have anonymity so then there's no um, sort of uh, like in very few cases will you follow up trolling with a complaint and 
like I was telling you back there, I go and look at the DP of the person trolling me and I'm like, bichara. And you know, then you just feel like, his <laughs> paint feel ho hai, wo lag hai, bilkul, na khush lag hai So, two times something bol ke khush ho hai, I'm like, okay, bhai. Plus, there's record unemployment and then these things are also paid gigs. So, I'm like, good for you. You're making uh, bread and butter for your family. I support it wholeheartedly. Please go for that's, it. <laughs> that's, that's the attitude. That's the attitude. Arana, I just want to ask you about, you know, the glass ceiling now. Rising all the way to the top. Now, there's a certain perception that, look, India is a land of paradoxes and women are treated really badly in many areas. But in many other ways, there's no glass ceiling. They can rise all the way to the top. You can have a prime minister, leader of political parties, chairmen of banks, you know, all of you. Is there a glass ceiling in India still or no? In absolute terms, yes. So, uh, what Ekta is talking about, there have been enough leadership uh, meetings and summits uh, and platforms that you go to, and it's a sea of men. Yeah. And so many... Uh, that's what you call it. <laughs> And there's so many things, right, uh, Vikram? Okay, it's majority not... men, majority men on a panel. Uh, I'm speaking as a minority here right now for obvious <laughs> reasons, but majority of men on a panel is is one thing, but a glass ceiling which says a woman can't be the boss. Is that can be, still but an it's attitude? Limited. We're talking numbers, right? And mm. then if you talk, there's so many, so there are so many manifestations of this. So, for instance, the pay gaps. There's so many, right? There's so many ways of looking at this, Vikram. Yeah. Uh, you know, Vikram, I'd, I'd, I'd like to share a, uh, an anecdote. I joined, uh, it's a couple of years ago, and uh, I was sitting in a conference room, uh, you know, for a pitch, and there was a big uh, Bollywood producer who walked in, and, uh, you know, he was sitting opposite me, and there was silence for 10 minutes. He just wouldn't speak. So after 10 minutes, I asked him if he was waiting for someone, and he said, your boss. Uh, yeah, and so I said, I'm the boss, <laughs> you can narrate it to me. And after 15, and so he was of course completely flummoxed, he kept looking here and there, and then he said, shall we reschedule and I'll come again. So he wasn't okay talking about his story to me. But I'm really glad and thankful to, you know, women uh, like Ekta and Richa and Aradhna, you know, who've shattered all glass ceilings. They've opened the doors for people like us to get in. And I really keep telling everyone that, you know, go in, find your place, sit down, and if there's no chair, drag it in and find your place. There is glass ceiling, of course. Yeah. I mean, Ekta sitting here, Ekta, do you remember uh, on one of our seasons of TED Talks, she did a TED Talk for us, and I remember that line so distinctly from her TED Talk. She said, I didn't have a plan B. Yeah. This is what I had to do, and I had to succeed. Right, so it's not easy to get here. There are well, no, no one plan was B. launching me. I had to launch myself as a producer. There you go. And thank God you did. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. <laughs> thank God you did. Okay, I'm just going to. You know, I know we are we are running out of time very 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 soon, but I just wanted to let's do some brainstorming about an actual problem, right? So sometimes when it comes, to, I keep hearing people saying. We've got to change people's mindsets, right? And especially the way people approach women in this country. We've heard it most recently, you know, this, the horrible thing that we just saw in Jharkhand and after that led to a major debate about the way women are in general treated in India, the way they are stared at and you know, on the streets, groped in many places. And people said, attitudes need to change. I just want to know what do all of you feel because you're also in the in a business of shaping people's minds, your influencers to that extent, the programs you do, the content that you create, can sometimes change people's mind. Do you think it can be done? Do you think it should be done? Do you think it's unfair to say that women have a special responsibility out here? Do you think women can play a greater role because you know how to get the message across in the right manner? I don't, uh, I don't know if we necessarily know how to get the message across, but I think like intention, intentionality really matters. We can sit in these English panels in five-star hotels, but we have to translate that into something actual. What do all of us take back from this conversation? 
why is it beneficial not just to the, the very often the minute you start talking about gender there's a perception of someone deeply disgruntled and unhappy like oh i didn't like but this is so unfair it's not always that it's all it's also sort of progress some of the countries that are marked highest in terms of happiness in the world have great gender parity wouldn't it be nice if we could just all get along and be safe tra travel when we wanted to have transport why do people go to say a safe haven like goa for instance where women feel freer in being themselves now now that will immediately get associated with something negative in terms of a cultural context so i just want to say if you actually look around genuinely everyone will be happier if there was more women in teams i'll give you an example this year i turned producer we went to shoot a film called girls will be girls and that is me and my husband ali's first film as producers and uh, the director was a woman and she wanted um, you know uh, th there was also sexuality in the film so she wanted uh, a all female team ke you know actors thode young hai aur sada otherwise what what happens normally i can tell you from this side is like you're pretending to like be really into this guy and trying to kiss him and be in the moment and then someone is holding a you know big thermocol and they're like nahi nahi ek minute cut cut isko thoda upar karo nahi nahi shadow aa raha hai shadow aa raha hai and like there's no there's no sense you don't feel safe always and uh, in 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 emotional way not necessarily in a physical way we wanted to make an all female crew or largely female crew or lighting department mein there are no women in india you never hear you say light dada light men there's no women so that was one department like you said slowly the participation of women has been increasing in all departments like producers thanks to people like ekta and so on so <clears throat> we did this uh, we thought how about we do a little training program because there's nothing we'll speak to a grips company and we'll see if we can <laughs> we can train people i'm laughing because this uh, sounds crazy but it actually happened it's fantastic we applied for a grant to berlin ale we won two grants instead of one we got some money we put it together we put out a call for and 40 women sent in their applications out of them 10 were selected we went and spoke to this company called light and light which is in goregaon and they said ha ha ma aapko trainer de denge and they spent time uh, teaching girls who storytelling through lighting moody lighting different types of things like how to use new technology how to use an app um and uh, 10 of these women were trained ali also attended the workshop and uh, one of them we hired on our set one of them is working on the sets of mirzapur one of them was working with vishal bhardwaj now this is i'm this saying this is intentional this is this intentional. intentional this is an educational thing we identify ki acha yahan nahi hai so what can we do to bridge this gap first because you see that things are, and like of all the women on the stage i'd love for you to hire some of the girls we train because they're ex excellent and i don't think formal training for lighting exists in this country so these girls will be at an advantage please hire them and use them and this is all free of cost we had girls who were tribal girls from chatisgarh we had we had girls from bombay delhi everywhere girls who couldn't speak english or hindi so that's a great practical example of how you can change behavior and change attitudes you want to coming back to the theme that i was saying we're talking about changing attitudes in general agar aadmiyon ka attitude change karna hai they should not be staring at at, at girls or harassing them in trans public transport especially in delhi can that be done i mean don't put everything on to only entertainment definitely we are culture shapers i don't shirk from that responsibility take it very seriously but this is everything vikram it's also our bringing it's background it's education it's so many things right that play a role in this and it can definitely be done we are doing our bit yeah if we do that ekta changing attitudes yeah but actually my personal belief is the day women see we have started pedestalizing women good girls and bad girls that's where the real problem is i was on a panel a few years ago and that's when i decided not to do any today was after a long many years because i had these three women very lovely women 
discussing how they will never touch anything sexual because suddenly they want to present women in a positive light. And I told these girls afterwards, I said, you all are doing the biggest disservice to women. You are creating this belief that if I'm a good girl and I'm only a good girl, should I be revered? If I achieve something, I, dr I fly a plane, I study, pass my exams, if I drink, if I enjoy, if I wear a short skirt, I'm a bad girl. Suddenly you have a right to judge me. So I decided I'll just go on the other side and make all bad girl stories. Because guess what? I am a bad girl. I'll wear a short skirt if I had the body, of course. But I don't care because that's the scary part. Every girl is trying to fit in the individuality that lets you breathe is being stifled because you're supposed to fit in, to be accepted by even us. So I want to actually say, it's time we stop giving people a pedestal and then later on telling them to live on that and live just there. I made a pedestal of the stones thrown at me. So I want women to know it's okay to follow the unbeaten path and be where you want to be because you don't have to fit in. And therefore, I feel there's a real big need now for us to start telling women to just be. It's very, very important. Just be, you don't have to fit in. You resonate with that. I. I played a mother to someone twice my age in my almost first film. So I totally don't care about fitting in <laughs> because it's, it's like very cookie cutter. Yeah. Uh, but we are all part of this problem. We all have certain expectations from each other, from our families. Ghar ki bahu hai betiya, mummy. I think we are flat out of time. Let me get yeah. a final thought from no, you. No, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, stories can connect. They can inspire, they can provoke thought. And uh, I feel like, you know, as somebody who's, uh, who has the ability or be, to be an enabler, uh, I take this role very, very uh, responsibly. And uh, the kind of stories that we've put out, you know, we have women who are vulnerable, uh, who are flawed, who are overly ambitious, you know, who are, who don't care anything about what society thinks of them. Uh, they're good girls. They are smart girls. And those shows have worked. Uh, and it's really important uh, that we put out all facets of women. And I feel that the most important thing that we can do is when we give agency to women on screen to do whatever they want not decide what they should be doing. That's really important. But before that, it's important to have women on screen, have them share equal time in, on screen, behind screen, during promotions. That's really important. It's important for people to see women. That's important. I think that's a, that's a fantastic comment to end this on. So who doesn't want to see women? No guy in this room is going to go to an all-male film if there's no sign of a woman. Come on, get real, but guys. Not please. just be wallflowers. Yeah. Not look, just be wazes. Look at the number of people who are refusing to leave this particular gathering. I think it will be good yeah. to just be, unapologetically just be. It shouldn't be an apology, whatever you want to be, right? Just be unapologetic. All right, on that note, we have to end this session. Thank you all so much for having joined us. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram, for braving four women. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you. It's, it's, a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you, audience. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, ladies. And thank you, sir, for this uh, lovely insight. Can we have a photo op, please, before you exit the stage? You, you guys can please kindly come in the center of the stage. Uh, Vikram, sir, photo op, please.